So, it, I know you guys probably can't tell, but I'm diagnosed with clinical depression. Um, and I've had that since I was in high school, and I remember vividly one day in the fetal position on my bed, and I was crying and calling out for God to kill me because I just couldn't handle it anymore. I couldn't handle being at home and having my mom look at me because I look a lot like my dad, and she hates my dad. So it kind of bled over to treating me like that. And I feel that religion teaches you to abuse yourself in a way. And I've seen this several other ways. I recently interviewed somebody, uh, his name's Andrew, and he was telling me about his time as a Mormon growing up. And one of the things that was really harped on him was how evil and sinful masturbation was. And growing up, being a teenager and whatnot, he would find himself in this continuous loop of just abusing himself into thinking that he was a horrible person. Uh, to the point where he developed many psychological uh, problems. And it, it got to the point where, you know, as an adult, he was like, I'm not going to allow my daughter to go through this because he had a 14-year-old daughter. And so he told the Mormon elders, I'm not going to let you take my daughter, my 14-year-old daughter, into a room, shut the door, and talk to her about masturbation. I'm not going to teach her that it's makes her a horrible person if she does it, or she's going to go to hell or anything. He was subsequently ejected from the Mormon faith. He was shunned out of it. He was cut off. And that was really hard for him. And I see this in so many ways across the non-religious community of being shunned out and losing everything when that happens. So to, to the panelists, I want to know, uh, what do you think about the impact of, uh, of religion on mental health? Uh, yeah, so a lot of people argue that there's a lot of good in religion, right? Um, it helps children cope with death, they say. Uh, it, there's a lot of different examples people give. Well, isn't it good, you know, when someone believes in God and so they go and they feed homeless people in soup kitchens? Like, that? that's because of God. And I call crap on that. No, I'm sorry, it's not because of God. Because there's there's plenty of humanists sitting right here right now, and we do good every day without God. So um, I think that a lot of people want to give God credit for things. They want to give Allah credit for the work that they're doing on their own. If you feel in your heart that you want to do good for someone, go out and do good for someone. Uh, that helps your mental health. Right? Staying true to what you believe, staying true to who you are. Uh, you take your credit for that if you want to or don't. Most of the time I do my work behind a computer screen. I work probably 16 hours a day. I normally don't get my face out there because I don't want to. Um, and if that's how you feel, you can still do a ton of good without getting your face out there too. Um, we all have different <laughs> motives. We all have different desires uh, for what we want to accomplish while we are on this earth for our short time. Um, and so we need to understand that mental health and religion is typically uh, worsened because of it. And uh, again, I'm going to speak from the Islamic um, point of view. Ex-Muslims live in Islamic countries. They live in a world where their relatives are constantly saying things like, death to infidels, and uh, kill the kafirs, okay, those are the non-believers, their they're, they're families, the people they love. Can you imagine, uh, you know, if, if your parents said death to someone who's exactly who you are inside and you're having to hide it? This is disgusting, this is terrible. We have a support group where daily we get messages from people saying, if you can't help me, I'm just going to kill myself. We have lost team members from Islamic countries to suicide. We have lost uh, so many people who have taken their life because on a daily basis, even though they no longer have religion, even though they know they can do good without God, even though they know they're a good and valued person, their religious culture screams at them on a daily basis, you are not good, you are worthy of hate, and you deserve no happiness. So if anyone can think that in a world where religion, religious culture helps 
incubate those kind of feelings in someone, if they think that mental health, there are, there are good things that come out of it, I think that the bad things that come out of it really outweigh any good you might be able to find. You brought up something that I think is interesting, which is the claim that religion helps people cope with death. And I think that's strange, at least in some forms of fundamentalist Christianity, where you can claim it helps cope with death, but then your children or other people in your religion are then coping with themselves or other loved people who are going to or are currently burning in hell for eternity, which I really don't understand how you think that on the balance, the idea that people die is better. That's really strange. Um, which tells me that people, it's just making excuses, basically. Um, same thing about doing good. Um, I get all the time, why do you criticize religion when it helps you do good? Well, for one, it helps you do good for the wrong reasons, and then you're misunderstanding why you're doing good, and then sometimes you do misguided things that you think are good because you're trying to please something that doesn't exist instead of actually helping people. And you end up with a really strange back and forth, which I think is mentally unhealthy and also unproductive, where you exaggerate the bad in what you've done. You think you're instantly a sinner because of any bad thing you do. And then instead of constructively changing your habits, you think that one prayer that you utter suddenly changes you. And I've seen people just swing wildly back and forth between that. And it's unhealthy for how you cope with things in your life, and I think it's psychologically unhealthy as well. And one of the big things that I experienced toward the tail end of my religious time is the conflict but the conflict I had inside myself trying to make myself believe in things that I just knew wasn't true. And that's extremely damaging. It was, it's, it's very uncomfortable. It's very, um, it's, it's physically painful in your mind. At least it was for me. So I think there are all kinds of things that religion complicates. It doesn't, it doesn't help you cope. It doesn't make you a better person. Um, it just complicates things and it makes you do things for the wrong reasons. I think, I think Drew said in a video once, it's like, um, throwing a dark blindfold or use some analogy like that where when you do when you do good for religious reasons you're basically just doing it blindly without thinking about why you're doing it and I think it leads a lot of people off course in really bad ways yeah I uh, I think we can all agree that religion causes serious tribalism um, it causes people to isolate others from society uh, and we're very social creatures so that is a big problem um, that, that will really mess people up. I mean, it may seem like a, pr a pretty cool guy at a distance, you know, but I do have a lot of social awkwardness as a result of being isolated from society that way. Um, so that's something we really need to keep in mind. I mean, that is harmful. And aside from that, um, the belief in hell has really messed some people up. I mean, it's, it, it's still in their heads years later atheists for a decade they are still living with this fear of hell um, if, if that's the case you should go talk to a secular therapist I'd say right you brought that up earlier secular therapy project there is no reason to be ashamed of that uh, I mean I've seen therapists in my life before plenty you guys should go deal with that if if that's the case for you and another interesting quote from Christopher Hitchens I thought I would mention was, God created us sick and commanded us to be well. I think that's a pretty apt quote. So. Um, interesting that Telltale brings up tribalism. Um, because, um, <clears throat> let's, let's define the term real quick, pernicious tribalism. And we're going to define it as the behavior that stems from strong loyalty to one's own group as propagated by dogma or manipulation. So I'm wondering, how can we create these atheist communities while avoiding this pernicious tribalism? And for me, at least, it's questioning even us up here, even the creators in this room, questioning what we're saying and what we're doing. But it's also on the creators to not like viciously attack somebody that corrects you. That was, you, you know, part of the whole how, how to how to take criticism. You know, you can tell constructive criticism when it comes your way, and you should listen to constructive criticism. And I think that it's it's a two way street. 
that you guys, you know, people that consume our content, needs to consume it with a skeptical eye. And if we say something that doesn't sound right, comment. Let us know how we're wrong. And then it's also on us not to push you away. And that's something that I've really worked on in the past couple of years of doing because um, me personally, uh, hearkening back to the mental health thing, I have a problem with, uh, you know, taking criticism with, you know, somebody that I perceive as having a condescending attitude in my initial reaction to that. I've, I've really had to work hard on how I respond to people. That's probably been one of the biggest struggles of me being a creator on either YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, anywhere. And so I'm, I'm wondering for the panelists, like, what do you think? Like, how do we stop this tribalism that does seem to be investing the atheist community and kind of splitting it up? Yeah, you, you brought up some very good points on, on being skeptical of everything that you hear. Um, what we can do, first of all, atheist communities are outrageously important. And a lot of people even question, why do we need an atheist community? We're not religious. Uh, it's because there are, there are parents out there who lose their children, right? And they don't, they don't want to hear it shoved down their throat that God needed another angel. Um, there are ex-Muslims who uh, are, are literally going to be killed, stoned to death, um, if they come out and say that, that they might not believe in Allah. Uh, so the atheist community is outrageously important. And the way that we build atheist communities, and I'm kind of an expert on building atheist communities, uh, is that we can't, we can't shut people up. Okay, and something that I like to challenge people to do, if you can't do it on a daily basis, do it on a weekly basis, find something that makes you uncomfortable and try to understand it. And a lot of people are just like, you know, oh, that sounds easy to do, it's hard. So if you're, if you're a hardcore feminist, find some MRA comments and try to understand what they're saying. Try. And it can make you uncomfortable. It can make you start to question things. And that, that is good. That's how we build a community. That's how we keep people together who say, okay, you have a different idea, I have a different idea, but I'm gonna think about what you have to say. Never be afraid to be wrong. People are so afraid to be wrong nowadays that they dig their feet in the ground and they just stick to what they're saying. No, be wrong, being wrong is great because if you can find that you were you had flawed logic somewhere and someone shows you this way of thinking is better because here I'm showing you the evidence, you've improved yourself. That's a badge of honor, that's a great thing. So when you join atheist communities, those are the things that you need to keep in mind. Challenge yourself, be friends with people that have different ideas, Cut confirmation bias, okay? Nothing is worse than a whole bunch of people sitting in a room saying, yes, I agree with you, yes, I agree with you, and I agree with you, and oh, you've got great ideas, you've got great ideas. That is boring, and it, uh, it really just leads to a nasty, disgusting community in the end, because the first time someone goes to question something, they get shunned, they get thrown out of their community that they help build, and it's, it's sick, it's a sick culture when everyone starts to agree. So challenge yourself, uh, be a stronger member in our community by accepting people, even if you don't accept their ideas, even if you don't accept their beliefs. Separate the people from their beliefs. That was really good, and I don't think I could really add anything to it. <laughs> well, the sentence doesn't stop there. I don't think I can add anything as far as how we interact within the community. I think that's dead on. We basically need to essentially not be jerks. Like, just be open-minded to other people. Don't, don't dig in. And I saw a lot of rhetoric within the atheist community about taking sides or which side are you on, stuff like that. None of that is constructive. Um, I would focus more on tribalism of us, like us versus religious people, which I think is an easy thing to slide into, um, especially as they get nasty and stuff like that. Um, and for me, I find that the most important thing is just to recognize that, or recognize, remember what it was like for me to be a Christian, and I kind of touched on this before, but just always be humanizing them and understanding them and recognizing how our message affects them. Uh, a lot of us have content that is not going to be well received by them. And 
we don't always construct our uh, content to be something Christians would appreciate. And I think there's value in that sometimes because you have to tear down those barriers of automatic reverence for religion. Um, but there's a difference to me between creating my content, which a lot of times is um, targeted more toward people who are on the fence or maybe already don't believe and are looking for a um, vocabulary to process that, and then how I interact with people from my past who are Christians still. And I try to be very understanding with them and, and get where they're coming from and converse on their level. And I just think it's really important to remember that we're all Christians. They're not dumb for being Christians. I wasn't dumb when I was a Christian before. A lot of people are to say that. But yeah, just, just remember where we came from. I think it's a big thing. Yeah, um, I would say as creators, we actually, we have a lot of people listening to us and it's very important that we, we stay on track with the message. But you guys have people listening to you too. We all have people listening to us here, right? When you say, I'm an atheist, people's heads turn, and they want to discuss that all of a sudden. Uh, so I feel like it's, it's important to realize that we all shape the discussion uh, in our own ways at our own times. We all shape the discussion. And it's important to realize that at one point, we all probably have that tribalist mindset. And we need to make sure that we, uh, we don't forget that. We need to make sure we weed that out of our personalities. When I left Jehovah's Witnesses, I realized I had to reassess everything that I ever learned. Like everything about Noah's Ark, about evolution, about the Big Bang, about everything. And this is one of those things that we have to constantly reassess. Are we being tribalistic? Are we, pick, are we picking sides? Are we uh, showing our bias for somebody? We need to keep that in mind at all times. Uh, but for the uh, final uh, thing tonight, um, final question, which we gotta kinda keep brief because we're kinda at limit here. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm wondering, what do you guys think about the, what was the next step you know, for the atheist movement as far as addressing religious issues as they impact our society? Uh, the next step, uh, I think that we, at least in the Islamic portion of this, I need to keep, keep on with the same step that we already have right now. Uh, we need to keep being the voices for the ex-Muslims who, who have no voice. Okay, their voice is taken from them over threat of death, over threat of imprisonment, uh, especially in Pakistan right now. Their, their government sends, sends messages to people's phones, letting them know who to contact in case of blasphemy. Okay, these people are suffering. And if you're safe and you've got a place where you, know, you can be, where you can speak out, where you can be somebody's voice, be somebody's voice for them. Uh, and that's what I think we need to do. I don't know as far as specific strategies, but just to keep it brief, I, to me, my strategy is just keep trying to normalize atheism. Just the idea that not believing God just really isn't weird. And I think just continuing to put the message out there, let people view it, it's going to slowly erode the perspective and normalize who we are and help them understand us. And I think that'll uh, just keep moving society in the right direction. Yeah, I can agree with that. Um, Religious people have this persecution complex, of course, so we have to be very careful about how we approach things. And um, generally, I say street epistemology is a good way to do it on, on a, lower, a lower, more personal level. But if we can scale those ideas up and make uh, our approach toward things calm and rational and non confrontational, then we will hopefully get to see the benefits of that. So keep things calm, rational, non-confrontational in general. I uh, think that these creators up here are some of the best creators out there. Everybody, all the creators that took part today are some of the best ones on, on any social media and in the movement in general. So uh, I thank you guys for joining me up here today to talk about this very important issue. And I, I want to thank all the creators you know, that came out and made this possible. I want to thank you guys, you heathens, 
especially, you know, for coming out and making this a, a successful like forum. And I, I think that we've done a, a lot of great conversation here today. I think we've done a lot of good. So thank everybody for taking part in today. I know Thomas is going to be up next, giving kind of an in speech. We're running into it a little bit right now, but um, <clears throat> but yeah, let's go ahead for. Enjoy.